This is my front yard, it's Memorial Day weekend, 2020. As you can see it's kind of a nice sweeping cascade up there. And uh, you can see the lake right here. See the uh, big red sage just coming in. Blue bonnets behind it. I do love the big red sage. This is one of the plants that attracts uh, multiple kinds of butterflies, not just one. So it's you know, real useful to have a nice big patch of this. Attract butterflies you don't have anything else for. You can see the blue bonnets look kind of ratty. It's okay. They'll come back next year. Canna lilies. These are finally growing. Looking pretty young. No blooms yet. These guys back here just came in the mail. They've only been in there for less than a week, about a week. Um, you can see the purple stuff is Mystic Spire Sage. And the Mystic Spire Sage uh, goes really well with the red Salvia Gregii. So, going to have a whole bunch of Salvia Gregii and Mystic Sage playing together here. Right next to the big leaves of the Canis and the path. It's going to come from over there, wrap around, go this way, so people can walk through the garden. A lot of Salvia Gregii's here, which I love, and I just love the look of the Salvia Gregii's and the uh, Mystic Spire Sage there. Awesome. You can also see that the Pride of Barbados is starting to come in over there, just starting. That's an awesome, awesome bloomer. So, uh, and the Esperanza behind it is just dwarfing it. Uh, in the middle here, we've got a nice big leaf sage. Uh, this is a Forsythia, Forsythia. I've taken a couple of videos of this, but oh, here, it's got these little kind of yellow blooms on it like this. Um, not little, they're huge bloom spikes, but I want to get a big patch of it here. So the plant was really big last year, but I pinned down all of its branches. Got another plant here, another plant here, another plant here, because rather than having one big plant, I'd rather have four big plants eventually. So uh, kind of getting that started. I actually want a fifth one. Um, then over here you can see these little bricks. They are uh, hiding little bitty salvia gregii's from cuttings. Salvia gregii's used to be in a different part of the yard, but they weren't getting enough sun like they do here. Nice, nice looking with the flag. Uh, here we have Greg's mist flower. I call this hummingbird crack. Back there we have cigar plant, the orange stuff. Oh, you can see a little monarch there, right there. Um, and the cigar plant back here, I had to move one of them. It was getting uh, engulfed by the uh, by the uh, sweet almond verbena. Sweet almond verbena. Oh, look, there's a couple butterflies down there playing around. Sweet almond verbena has some amazing fumes, amazing scents to it. I'm going to have a whole bunch of this all along the yard. Uh, more of it here. See a couple more here. And then uh, there's a big patch of azaleas. These azaleas were planted in 1960. They're huge, and I'm not going to trim them. I think they're awesome. I believe that's some sort of a cherry laurel, some form of a cherry laurel. I'm keeping it for now. And then we've got a, uh, a water oak growing in over there. It's a volunteer. I'm cultivating it. Part of the no-mow concept, I've uh, got a bed of mountain laurels just put in over there. I mean, they are new, 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 new. And they got a good rain last night, so they should grow well. Each one of those white rocks is a mountain laurel. Here you can see the path between the driveway so that people can eventually walk around here. I'm eventually going to have my food garden right here. There'll be a fig in the back so no one will be able to see this way. My food garden will be right here eventually. It gets into a lot of nice sun here. And uh, it's right next to the front door in the garage. Love this plant here, not this one. These are old azaleas. I don't know, take them or leave them, I don't really care. Uh, these guys here, black and blue sage, uh, it's a cultivar. You can't actually can't grow it from seeds, so I really like that, the fact that it's kind of somewhat rare. And uh, so I've grown all these from cuttings from a couple of them that I bought. Uh, this is an abelia, I believe. I think it's an abelia. It smells really nice. The flame acanthus is really starting to come along here. I've got like 11 of them here and they're really starting to come along. Vinca in the background there. Firecracker fern over there mixes with the plumbago in the back, which looks amazing. This is Skyflower Duranta. I'm going to have to move it. It's too big. That's the focal point of my yard. In Austin, these don't get more than six feet tall, but here they don't freeze and they don't, they get big. So it's too big as you can see. Um, 
more American flags kind of cascading up to the sunflowers. This is a um, so one one lone blue bond hold on there. This is a Salvia macrophala, a canyon sage, and um, it's a red and white hot lips version. Doing really well here. Oh look, you can see a little carpenter bee back there. Lots of lots of wildlife here. This is a great scene, the red, white, and purple, but I want red, white, and blue like the flag. So when I remove this purple here, I'm going to find some sort of blue to put there. Um, you can see this is Mexican bush sage. I do like the Mexican bush sage, and it would eventually take up this whole area. Eventually, this there'll be a walking path through here, like a little horseshoe, where you can come in over there, come out over here kind of thing. Um, Mexican bush sage is going to line the driveway with plumbago, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite plants. I got five of them here. I've pinned down branches for each one of them on the back side, so I should have five more growing. Man, they're growing slow. I just do not have a lot of luck propagating plumbago. I mean, there's one, there's one. I pinned these down last year. This thing should be decent size right now, but they're just not. It's very frustrating, very frustrating. I think I might just have to buy some more because um, I want that bigger. Although it does look really good with the firecracker fern and the uh, plumbago and the sky flower and that just looks really nice. Here we have Texas sage. This is a Rio Bravo version. And tropical sage. Tropical sage is getting a little big. I think next time I come, I'm going to cut it back because I do want it like waist high, I think. But this is hummingbird city right in here. Tropical sage is dominating and I'm letting it. I just pulled weeds and I'm leaving this here because I want the tropical sage to dominate. So. Tropical sage and azaleas and uh, the big tree here is a black walnut tree, which is really super awesome. I'm trying to grow another one, cultivate another one down here. You can see I've got one. That well, that's a flamacanthus, but that's also a walnut tree. And I'm trying to find another walnut tree that'd be a good substitute. Last but not least, sunflower and larkspur garden. Man, the sunflowers look awesome, right? Sunflowers look great this year. Larkspur is still hanging in there. Really proud of the Larkspur. But ultimately, just look at the sunflowers, man. Those are Maximilians. Those are native sunflowers. They look wonderful. Got a couple over here as well. So, um, I really like the view. Sunflowers and the American flag. All the way down. Those are my three flags. Pretty cool garden. And over here we have Turk's Cap. Turk's Cap is big. It's out of control. I'm going to have to cut it back a little bit. But uh, this is another hummingbird paradise right here. I do love the Turk's cap. I mean, it just looks beautiful. It's a little overgrown back there. I'm going to have to do something with it. But uh, I haven't even gotten to the side of the garden yet, so it's coming.